For this problem, we have Br2 and ICL. So both of these are isoelectronic. That means that they have the same amount of electrons. And they also have a similar mass. Okay, so, but, and here's two facts. Br2 melts at a negative 7.2 Celsius, and ICL melts at 27.2 Celsius. So even though they're isoelectronic and similar mass, they melt at different degrees. Why? Well, to explain that, you um, first have to understand what uh, increasing temperature means. When you increase temperature, what you're really doing is you're adding energy. You're adding energy so the molecules can move faster. Because temperature, all temperature is, is a measurement of how fast molecules are moving. So if you want to make those molecules move faster, you have to, you have to put in energy. So now you're putting in energy. So if you look at this, that means that this is a higher temperature than this one. So you're putting in more energy for ICL than Br2. Why is that? So first of all, you have to understand um, solid that oh, when it's melting, it's solid to liquid. Sure, that seems uh, easy, but what does that truly mean? What's, what is happening to make it? Uh, a solid go to a liquid, what's happening at the atomic level or molecular level. And that's where intermolecular forces come in. So the forces between two atoms are covalent or ionic. Um, but when you have the states of matter, that's intermolecular forces. Because holding these together are the forces in between each molecule, not, um, not in between atoms. So when you're adding in energy, when you're increasing the temperature, you're adding in energy to break these bonds, to let these, usually um, if it's in a solid, it's vibrating a little bit. Um, so if you're adding in energy, you're, you're making these molecules move so much that it eventually shakes free and then becomes a liquid. So all these, so in a liquid, that's why it can move and adopt the shape of its container because it broke free of these bonds and is now moving around. So intermolecular forces, right? So, but once again, um, there's still this similar mass. So that means that, and similar mass and isoelectronic, but they're uh, melting at different degrees. Um, so intermolecular forces have to explain this. So if you look at the structure, it'll explain it well. So for um, Br2, Br2, that's the same element. So when you're the, when you have the same element, it's the same electronegativity, meaning the same amount of um, pull each um, atom is going to do to the electrons. So it's going to share its electrons pretty evenly. But in nature, nothing's perfect. So sometimes um, uh, there can be more atoms on this side and be a negative charge, and less atoms on this side making a positive charge, giving it um, giving it. Uh, intermolecular forces, which is dispersion forces, because um, it, it has a little bit of uh, disturbance, which causes um, a slightly positive and a slightly negative charge. Over here, you have ICL. See, CL is actually more electronegative than I. So that means it's, uh, I's, um, iodine's electrons are going to be pulled in by chlorine. If the electrons are pulled in more, because like in here it happens by uh, randomly, but here chlorine's actually stronger, so it's going to pull these electrons more um, than Br2. Uh, so it's going to when it pulls in more, it creates a stronger positive charge here and a stronger negative charge. So all molecules and atoms have dispersion forces, but because this is polar and it's pulling in more, it actually has another one called dipole-dipole forces because it's stronger. So this actually explains why you need to put in more energy, to, um, why it melts at a higher degree than Br2. This explains it because you not only have um, dispersion forces, you have one more force, and the more forces you have, uh, the more energy to break them. So yeah, so it has a stronger intermolecular force, be, um, forces, because there's two, while this only has one. Um, since their molar mass is the same, the dispersion forces are exactly the same, but there's one more force which causes 
this one to be stronger, and a stronger intermolecular force means it has a higher boiling point. Because um, the, the more strength it has, the, the less likely it's going to break, and the more energy needed to finally break it.